Hi there, it's James McCracken and in this video what we'll be doing is looking at a structure or a methodology that you can use with your presentations. When you're presenting you obviously want to make sure that the message you're communicating to your audience and the means by which you're communicating that message provides the most impact. Uh, it has the most relevance and it allows that audience member to really connect with your message in a way that resonates with them. Uh, either it inspires them, it engages them, it motivates them, or it gives them the understanding of your message so that ultimately they can take the content away, the understanding away, and do something with it. Because I'm sure that you'll agree that uh, when it comes to presenting, we want to make sure that the engagement and the experience and the connection during that presentation is as relevant and as effective as possible. We also want to make sure that one of the hallmarks of a great presentation is what people choose to do with the information once they leave that presentation. So this structure that we're going to go through is known as format. Uh, I'm going to call it a framework or a, or a methodology because I could otherwise misconstrue the word format with uh, the word, uh, well, you, we could call it, it's a format in terms of how we do it. Um, and it just so happens that it's called format. Now, why do we want to have a framework? Why do we need to have a structure or methodology to assist us in terms of being able to present? Well, <clears throat> one of the key reasons is because when you're presenting, you want to make sure that your audience can stay engaged and can stay with you for a, the duration of your presentation. You also want to make sure that you've got a structure and a strategy and a framework that minimizes the potential or minimizes the need for you to have to rely on your cue cards and your notes because you can rely on the framework to assist you in terms of being able to deliver your message. Uh, when you've got a format or when you've got a structure like this, it also means it's much, much easier for you to be able to uh, present consistently in a way that you know will deliver the best outcome for the participants in terms of engagement, in terms of uh, understanding, in terms of connection with your message and your ability to be able to have an impact on them. And uh, we also know that when you use this, this structure and this format, it really accommodates the different strategies or the different ways of thinking that people have. So we know that some people, uh, they're big picture people. Uh, they like understanding the purpose behind things. There's some people that are uh, what you might call what-based people. They, under, what, they want to know what is being said and what the message is. There's some people that are very much into the how, so uh, the detail, the steps that sit behind the big picture. And there's some people that want to almost uh, ask, yeah, but what if this, or yeah, but what about that? And this framework really accommodates all of those different thinking uh, styles so that we can ultimately accommodate all of them. So we start with the big picture, which is the why, and then we understand, uh, we move down to what, so what it is that we're presenting. We then start with, oh, sorry, then we then continue with how a particular step is done, and we finish with the what if. So uh, when it comes to the why, when we're explaining why something's important, there's a few steps that we can use that really help make it easier to one, get our message across, and for two, for people to connect with that message in a way that's useful for them. So there's a few things that we can do here, and I'll outline these for you. In fact, I might do it in red pen because it might just be a little bit easier. So, if we were to talk about why it's important to have a framework, a uh, for presentations, then we'd want to talk about the benefits of that framework. So we've talked earlier about the fact that if we have a framework, it'll give us confidence. It'll give us the ability to rely on the framework. It means that we don't have to rely on our notes. We don't have to remember every single line. Uh, it also means that we're able to present our message with a lot more impact and a lot more uh, effectiveness. And ultimately, that's going to deliver a better experience for our participants. And ultimately, that means that the experience that they'll have of you or that they'll have of us as a presenter is going to be a better one. So there'd be some of the benefits. We might have a question in here. So a question for this might be, so why is it important to have a framework? So what would be the benefit of having a framework? That would be a question. 
But you might ask that question of your audience if you're facilitating a conversation and ask for your audience's input to say, so why do you think having a framework for presenting is important for you? And they might tell you their reasons. Sometimes we can use stats. Stats are obviously helpful. They validate you know, certain things. So we might say that, uh, and I'm just using a stat here, that it's been said that on 73% of occasions when you use a framework, the impact is going to be significantly higher as opposed to not using a framework. So statistically, 73% of presenters who use a framework are going to have a better impact as opposed to those who don't. It's called contrast, like a contrast frame. So if we're talking about all of the benefits and giving ourselves confidence and our ability to be able to present with our notes, etc., then we could say, well, just imagine the opposite of that. Imagine if we didn't have a framework and imagine what would be the impact for you if you had to sit there in front of your audience and read off your notes, if you couldn't connect with your audience, you weren't able to inspire them or engage them and that you continually had to look down and read here as opposed to presenting to your audience. That will be a contrast frame so they can see the benefits of using a framework and then what would happen if they didn't have the framework. <clears throat> Sometimes we can use an example. So I'm essentially providing an example right now uh, for uh, the, the format methodology and I'm doing it by actually breaking down the format methodology. And lastly, we can have a quote. So you might say, well, according to one person who mentioned that uh, when you use a particular framework like format, it will increase the likelihood of you achieving a better sales result by 72%. I just made that up. Uh, but whatever the quote might be. So you might have a quote that you can use here in order to validate and add to the reasons why, in this case, why using a structure or using a methodology is helpful in terms of your presenting. What? When we get to the what section of the presentation, by the way, if we're doing, and I'll just, I'll use some, some numbers here. If we're doing a, say it's a 10 minute presentation, you'd spend about three minutes here you'd spend one minute here, you would spend five minutes here, and you would spend one here. One minute. I might just pull it down a little bit. One. So it gives you an idea. You spend three minutes to frame things up. You spend one minute just going over what it is that we're doing. You spend five minutes going through the detail behind Everything and this is almost like your feedback section or this is where you ask for feedback from your audience. So when it comes to the what, what we go through here is we might go through a definition. Sorry, my spelling, def in, ition, def in. So we're gonna, if there was a definition behind what it is that we're presenting, we will go through that. And uh, if there was any jargon, we would de-jargon. So we want to make sure that we're you know, minimizing any potential jargon so that we're speaking in most uh, layman terms or the terms that our audience understands best. Once we've done that, uh, typically uh, at the end of this section, after the three minutes, we'd say, how does that sound? Does it sound all right to you? Most of the audience will typically would say, yeah, that sounds good. Can I keep going? Yeah, I can. Fantastic. So look, the definition of format means it's a structure and a methodology that allows you to present in an effective way in order to be able to communicate and connect with your audience and deliver a really outstanding message. Uh, what it also means is that we've got certain words that we use here. And now I, I can't think of any specific jargon that we're using in the format section. But if there was jargon, I would de-jargon it here. At the end of that section, which is only one minute, I would then say to the audience, do you have any questions? No. Is it okay if I keep going? Yes, it is. Fantastic. So then you move on to this section. What I'm going to do now is show you how you use the format methodology. So you should go, you'll go through the steps. So you would present. 
each step. So let's just assume, for example, let's just assume that we might be doing the SMART goal setting. So specific, measurable, action, uh, relevant, uh, time bound. So what we'd do here is we'd present each step. So we'd present uh, the specific the step, which might be S for specific. And we'd present that in a mini format. So what that means by mini format is it would say SMART, the S. So, or S, which is specific. So the reason why uh, it needs to be specific is because if we're very clear on what it is that we want to do, our brain's going to direct ourselves towards that action much more likely. Uh, what it also means is that we're very clear on why we're going about something, which will provide us with a lot more inspiration and a lot more motivation to do it. In fact, it's actually been said that when you're very clear in your goals, you've got an infinitely higher likelihood of achieving them as opposed to those people who have ambiguity. So if you look at what I just said then, to give you uh, an example, I've more or less gone through some of these benefits in my S. And then I might say something like, so let me give you an example of what it means to be specific. I could say that I want to lose some weight. Or I could say I want to lose 18 kilograms in 36 weeks. And I want to lose half a kilogram every single week. That's a very specific goal, or that's a very specific action that I want to take. And uh, then I would ask the audience, does that make sense? Do you understand the benefit and the value of S and being specific? Yes, you do. Fantastic. So M, uh, so M for measurable, and you do the same thing. The reason why it needs to be measurable is because, da, 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 da. and on you go. So once you obviously move through your steps, uh, and if you're doing a 10 minute presentation, you probably only want to have about three steps in there. If you've got five steps, you want to go through them really quickly. Um, but ideally, you'd only want to have about three steps in order to be able to communicate your message reasonably effectively. Just looking to see if there's anything I've missed. And uh, what it says here is that the steps are the steps are clearly laid out just as we've been looking at. And lastly, that they're in mini format. Steps in mini format. Which is exactly as per what we've just gone through. So you'd present your steps, S-M-A-R-T, or whatever it is that you're presenting, or uh, why, what, how. Any questions so far? No, there isn't. Happy to move on? Yes, fantastic. So, uh, then you might recap up here. So, you might just say, look, what we've done today is we've just gone through an example of how you can use a structure and a methodology that allows you to be able to present consistently without having to use notes so that you can, sp uh, can spend more time connecting with your audience as opposed to spending more time focusing on the notes that you're trying to read. And the other benefit I should point out is when you have a methodology like this and you are connecting with your audience, I realize I'm speaking a little bit quicker now. Um, when you are using a methodology like this, it's also important for you to realize that the most important thing you can do with your audience is connect with your audience. I really want to emphasize that point. The most important thing you can do as a presenter is connect with your audience. When we start out presenting, we, we almost want to uh, spend more time getting our content right. You know, we're so focused on getting it right and making sure that we've got the right information in there. And whilst there's something to be said for getting it right, what your goal should be as a presenter is to know your content so well that you have to spend so little time thinking about it because it's a bit like doing your times tables. It's a bit like having to put butter on toast. You don't need to spend uh, a lot of time and effort thinking about it. You just know how to do it. What that also means is that you've freed up a lot more brain power to focus on how you can make this a great experience for your audience. Because typically, my experience and observation of many presenters is that they, they don't know their content as well as they could or they should, or what they're doing is that they're spending more time focusing on getting the content right as opposed to how do I make this really outstanding experience for my audience. And the better you can focus on making an outstanding experience, the better they'll receive you, and ultimately that's going to be a better win-win for everybody. So, what if? Uh, that's the last section, which is you typically something, uh, say up here, words like, uh, what did you notice? 
What did you notice? What did you notice? What did you learn? And what would you like to share? And you might get some feedback. You probably will get feedback. And you might then ask, are there any other questions? No, there aren't. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for letting me spend the time presenting my format methodology or the structure for how to use a presentation style without having to rely on your notes so you can spend more time giving a great experience for your audience. However it is that you wish to wrap it up, you just need to say something that's short, succinct and to the point and you'll ultimately be able to uh, have the right message that people connect with. So what we've just looked at is a methodology. It is a methodology that you can use all the time uh, in order to be able to present with effect, present with impact and present in a way that allows you to be able to uh, be more engaging because you'll ultimately know what you're going to present, you'll know why you're going to present it and you can be able to have a, a much better capacity to get, engage with and connect with your audience and ultimately that's the, uh, the whole mark of success as far as I'm concerned is how well your audience receives you and what it is that they choose to do with what they hear uh, once they leave that room. So that's, uh, that's what today's methodology, uh, well that's what uh, this methodology is about and I look forward to be able to uh, see how you progress with using this in a way that assists you with your confidence, with your ability to communicate and ultimately deliver an outstanding presentation for others. Thanks so much and bye for now.